Hello everyone, Charles Watts here. Welcome back to Inside Arsenal. It is Saturday. I hope wherever you're watching or listening to this around the world, you are having a very, very good start to your weekend. A weekend, of course, that features no Arsenal. We have to wait until Monday night for that game at Sheffield United. So we're going to have to sit back, watch and hope Nottingham Forest and Manchester United do Arsenal a favour. Quite funny, but I don't actually know which team I trust to do Arsenal favour more than Nottingham Forest or Manchester United. I'd probably say Nottingham Forest, <laughs> to be honest. Such is the state of Manchester United these days. But who knows? We'll have to wait and see what both teams do before Arsenal next run out on that pitch at Bramall Lane on Monday night. Plenty to talk about today. I want to talk about Gabriel Jesus. Is he going to come back into the team on Monday night? Should he come back into the team on Monday night? Lots of options Mikel Arteta to go with now. So we'll discuss that. We'll look at the latest team news. Look at what Ben White has been saying ahead of kickoff. He's been giving a really good interview to a few journalists as well. Got some questions and comments from you. Now, look, apologies. I don't know you're going to say, oh, Charles is apologising on one of his shows. <laughs> I know, but I am sorry this time because I know the light in is pretty crap at the moment, but uh, it's really, really early. And I, if I don't record now, I can't record because I've got to take my daughter and son out to their football practice in a minute then when he come home I've got to take my daughter to a gymnastics my son to his uh, ninja class uh, typical Saturday when Arsenal aren't playing typical dad stuff I need to do and I'm just not gonna have any time to do a video so I've got to do it now and I know the lighting's not great because basically the sun's not up <laughs> so sorry about that but uh, right right let's get cracking shall we and we'll start with Gabriel Jesus who's I think is a really interesting one on Monday night, what do you do with Gabriel Jesus? Does he start this game? Arsenal have obviously been fantastic without Gabriel Jesus since that win at Nottingham Forest. You look at the amount of goals they've scored, the West Ham game, the Burnley game, the Newcastle game, goals flying in left, right and centre. Of course, there was that one match in, in the middle of that, Porto in the Champions League where Arsenal didn't score, didn't look like scoring. Um, and I would have actually loved Gabriel Jesus to be av available for that game. And I do want Gabriel Jesus to start the game against Porto, the second leg that is coming up. I think he'd be invaluable in that match. But it's like, how do you get him ready for that Porto game? Do you throw him straight into the starting lineup on Monday night? Or do you give him 20 minutes, then maybe give him 60 minutes against Brentford and then play him uh, against Porto following that? Now, I know lots of you have been replying to conversations we've had in these shows over the last couple of weeks, and he's got to earn his place back in the team. And I do agree 100%. Um, he does need to earn his place back. So I, I, I wouldn't be starting him, I don't think. It wouldn't surprise me if Mikel Arteta does start him, I have to say. Uh, but I'd probably give him, look to give him half an hour or so. He didn't come on against Newcastle, obviously. He didn't need to. Game statement, he didn't need to. But as I said afterwards, I watched the subs come out onto the pitch after everyone had gone home at the Emirates. I watched the subs come out on the pitch and watched the sort of warm down, whatever it is, sort of game they, they always do after Arsenal matches. It's a good sort of 20, 25 minutes, short-sided game with full-size goals and everything, but it's really intense, high-intensity match. You know, they really go for it. And I watched Jesus during that 25 minutes is while I was recording my sort of player ratings video and then while I was uploading it all and he was flying into everything you know he looked it wasn't a player even his way back into things he he looked absolutely on it fit healthy was flying around there was no you know he, he didn't look like an injured player or someone who was still struggling with an injury um or that he was trying to protect himself from injury that sort of stuff so I think he's definitely ready he's had another week since then in training um Mikel was asked you know is he ready to start in the build-up to this game he said well he's fit enough but knowing how long it'll last is something different, probably. But we didn't want to take any risks after the result we had against Newcastle. Obviously, we need him fit. He's a massive player for us. And we want to make sure now that we load the players in the right way. So the question on will he start or not, I I wouldn't be surprised, put it that way. But I think Mikel will probably err on the side of course. I think he's going to be absolutely focusing on that Porto game. I think that is definitely, I know he's going to say the, the most important game is the next game. He always says that, but there's no doubt in my mind that he will be looking to that Porto game. He knows what Arsenal are going to have to do against Porto. He needs his experienced players. He needs his savvy players who understand what it means to play in the Champions League and the dark arts of the Champions League and what Porto are probably going to do. And Gabriel Jesus ticks all of those boxes. He's a player you want to start that game. Um, and so I think it's going to be all about these next couple of games, making sure he is in his best possible shape pos uh, for that match against Porto. So I wouldn't, I, I think we'll probably see Havertz again play as a nine. And Jesus get 20 or so minutes, half an hour maybe. But please do let me know your thoughts on that. Would you be starting Gabriel Jesus against Sheffield United on Monday night? Or do you think 20 minutes, half an hour or so, see how he gets on, maybe start him against Brentford with that Porto game in mind? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Um, a couple have got in touch and talked about this. Floyd here says, what do you think about keeping Havertz and Trossard as a false nine this season and rotating Jesus with Saka? 
And Dave from Ottawa says, I like Jesus as a winger. Keep Trossard and Havertz up the middle and use Jesus in rotation with Saka and Martinelli or in the middle if we need to change the game. What are your thoughts, Charles? Uh, look, I absolutely think he can play there. We, well, we know he can play there because we've seen him do it for Arsenal this season. But more importantly, we've seen him do it a lot and do it very, very well from Manchester City. So he can play on the left. He can play on the right. Um I think I prefer him on the left. When I used to watch him in Manchester City days, I used to prefer him on the left. We saw him play on the right quite a bit for Arsenal at the start of this season. Um, but no, look, I think when he's fit and he, if he's fully fit and he's in the team or and, and around the place, I don't really think you're going to be using Havertz and Trossard ahead of him. They've both done very, very well in that position and Arsenal have done very well with them playing in that position. But I don't think they're going to keep a fit Gabriel Jesus out of the side if he's absolutely ready to go. I think Jesus is always going to come in rather than play players I don't know if you want to describe it as out of position because it's maybe not. In fact, I don't, you know, I think Trossard's best position probably is false nine. I think Havertz's best position from what we've seen so far probably is false nine. But if you've got those three players available and fully fit, in my opinion, and it is just my opinion, I know some of you will have different opinion, Jesus starts ahead of those, those two every single day of the week for me if everyone's fit and fully available. But absolutely, I think certainly next season when this new striker comes in, which I'm sure will happen in the summer, which you hope is going to be you know, really, really top level striker who's going to be competing, you know, maybe ahead of Jesus or certainly competing with Jesus for that number nine role, then that's going to give Mikel the option of being able to play Jesus out wide more and rest in the lights of Saka and Martin anymore, which I think will be a really useful thing coming into next season. Elsewhere, team news wise, Tommy Asu and Zinchenko, they will have fitness tests over the next couple of days. There's two more sessions. There's one today, one tomorrow, and then the team will travel up after tomorrow's session to Sheffield on the coach. Tommy Asu and Zinchenko will be assessed at the end of Sunday's session. They weren't training on Thursday, so are still, I, I think it's unlikely. I think from what I heard that Zinchenko is definitely the more, is, is higher, is further up in terms of the uh, possibility of returning than Tommy Asu is. But I think if neither of them are, tra are training by Thursday, I think it's unlikely that they will be involved on uh, on Monday night, but we'll wait and see. Like I said, um, an assessment will be made of them on Sunday before the squad leaves. Everywhere else, I mean, Timber's obviously back training with the squad, but he's not going to be available unless something else has happened that we don't know about. Then squad-wise, Arsenal are in really, really good shape for this game against against Sheffield United. Um, you know, Jesus is back, as we just talked about. He's fit. Thomas Party is back, is fit. Does he start this game? You would think not, but certainly that you'd be looking at this game as an opportunity for Thomas Partey to get some minutes into his belt, uh, under his belt, especially like Jesus with that Porto game on the horizon, which even if Partey doesn't start against Porto, you'd still be earmarking him for a good sort of half an hour in the second half, which is probably still going to be a real crucial part of that tie uh, to bring on a player like Thomas Partey. So I think these next to get next two games, just as important as they are for Jesus, they're just as important for Thomas Partey and getting minutes into his legs to ensure he's right for Porto. And then especially the game at the Etihad after the international break as well. So for the first time in a long time, it feels like Mikel has some good, good options and really difficult decisions to make in terms of what he does and how he manages his squad over the course of the 90 minutes at Bramall Lane. And when these two on screen come back, of course, in Tommy Asu and Zinchenko and Timber, who maybe probably a month away, you would you would think probably needs a couple of under twenty ones game before he can be considered. But once they're all back, and you think of the options that Arteta is going to have, then provided everyone else stays fit in the meantime, you know the subs benches are going to look great. The opportunity to rotate and change things up is just huge. And yeah, for the first time really, well, all season, you just think oh, it's going to be. Mikel's going to have some very, very nice headaches when it comes to choosing his team uh, week in week out. So that can only be a good thing. In terms of Sheffield United, Ben Brayton Diaz looks like he will be back. The uh, Paraguay striker, not Paraguay, Chile, sorry, <laughs> Chile striker, uh, former Blackburn player, of course, who Sheffield United signed in January. He came back and made a bit of an impact when he signed, scored a couple of goals in his first couple of appearances, then got a hamstring injury. Apparently, he is fit and back training, according to Chris Wilder in his pre-match press conference. Bulldog is back available for them as well. So got a few more options up front than they've had in recent weeks. I'll go through my sort of predicted 11s for the for the game, probably on my show on Monday morning. But yeah, I think the, the headline team news from a Sheffield United point of view is that Ben Brett and Diaz will be back for that game. Um, ben White has been given a really interesting interview. He sat down with a few journalists on Thursday at London Colney or the Shoba Realtor Centre, training centre, whatever you want to call it. And um, uh, he sat in this sort of round table type thing where a few journalists uh, fire questions at him and he, and he answers. Now, you know Ben White, what he's like with the media. Um, 
he, I think it kind of sometimes it can be um, what he says can be misconstrued. You know, misconstrued. You know, look, when he said, I don't like football, that's kind of gone hand in hand with him forever since he said that. But it's not that he doesn't like football. Of course, he likes football. He plays it every single day. He just doesn't like going home and immersing himself in it once he's home. You know, he's had a day's work. He's done all it. Basically, come into London Colney at nine in the morning, left whenever he's left. He's trained, he's sat in rooms doing video analysis, all that sort of stuff. When he goes home, he just wants to chill with his missus, play. He talks in this interview, actually, he plays bat and ball <laughs> with her a lot. And Uno, he says he's really, really competitive at everything he does. And he takes it really, really seriously when he goes home. But he just doesn't want to watch football when he gets home. And so when everyone says, oh, he doesn't like it, of course he likes it. He's grown up playing it and he lives and breathes it every single day he just doesn't want to be swamped by it when he goes home and fair play you know in my opinion i'm not, I'm not surprised if uh you know i'm surprised more players don't sort of ha have that attitude really when it comes to football but it's a really interesting interview i think he talks about lots of interesting stuff in it like i said his competitive nature when i talk about you know the, the games he plays with his missus at home his wife at home um he talks about uh, the kind of the dark arts, you know, that he's known for and his work with the goal on the goalkeeper at corners and things like that. I thought this was an interesting line when he talks about this season compared to last season. He says, I think the players we have had it as well will step up in those big games and provide what we need. I think we have improved massively as a team. And I think if we're in the same position this year, it will be very different. And I agree with him. I think this is a really interesting point. Um, you know, there's lots of people kind of look at last season and this season and say, have Arsenal really improved? The football's different and all that. And I understand that argument. But I do think come the big games, like when Arsenal go to the Etihad on uh, Easter Sunday, and I'm probably going to end up with egg all over my face here when City hammer Arsenal 4-0. But I just don't see that happening this time. I think Arsenal will go there. They might lose, but I think it'll be a completely different game. You think back to that game at the end of last season when City just steamrolled at Arsenal. It was 4-1, but it could have been 8-9-1. The, the, the golfing class was so, so huge. I don't see that happening. I think all the work Arsenal have done this season, I think the summer additions that they've made, I just think they're a better team to be able to cope with games like that. And I think we'll see that when Arsenal do go to the Etihad. And I think we'll see that when Arsenal go to Old Trafford and, and Tottenham as well. So I think he's right when he says, I do I do feel there has been an improvement this year. The football might not be as fun to watch, might not be as exciting to watch, although it is right now, given the amount of goals we're seeing. But I think as a team, and I think when you look at the numbers, certainly defensively and the chances Arsenal give up, the shots on goal they give up on their on their goal, I think they've definitely, definitely improved. I think they're a much stronger outfit this year than they were last year. And I do think he's right when it comes to this. But look, I've retweeted Simon Collins from the Evening Standard. He's done, he's one of the journalists who sat down with him. There's lots of good versions of the interview out there. Sam Dean at the Telegraph's done a really good one. Jordan Davis at the Sun. Um, so yeah, go and find it. Uh, I've retweeted Simon's, like I said, I'll drop Sam Dean's uh, one into the description below if you want to give a if you want to give that a click and go and read it because it's a it's a really good interview from a player who I just find fascinating Ben White and an absolutely brilliant player as well. Um, okay, moving on to some of your questions and comments. This was in response to what myself and James Benj were talking about. Yes, I had so many of you talking flagging up that line where we both said we think Arsenal are the best team in Europe right now. That right now is such a key thing. You know, I'm not saying Arsenal are the best team in Europe. I was just saying right now in current form since the start of the year, I think it's hard to argue. I know Leverkusen have obviously on the run that they're on. I know Inter Milan have scored loads of goals and been playing really well in Serie A and winning games. But I think, and, and I haven't looked and say, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong and I'm sorry. But I haven't looked at the the stats behind their their performances in terms of how many shots they're giving up on goal and the numbers. You know, I just look, look at what Arsenal are doing and the amount of goals since the start of the year that their XG shows they should have conceded and things like that and the goals they're scoring at the other end. I think it must be very, very hard to argue that they're the most informed team in Europe right now. And I'm not saying that they are. They are the informed. They are the best team in Europe. Of course I'm not. Uh, that will be decided at the end of the season. I'm just saying right now in this current run of form since January the 1st, I think they're, if they're not the, at the very top numbers wise, then they must be second, surely. Um, but I haven't put too much uh, sort of analysis into it. So if I'm wrong, I'm wrong and I'm and I'm sorry. But um, like lots of you got in touch in terms of our conversation with, about Jorginho and whether uh, he should be rewarded with a completely fresh new contract, like a two plus one or a one plus one, uh, things like that. Here's what you've had to say. That, User 94133 at the top says, Ari Jorginho, one plus one surely, but not two plus one. Should take into account Jorginho probably prefers EPL to some lesser leagues in Europe also. I think Saudi Arabia could be sniffing around Jorginho as well, so there might be some big money on the table from them for him that Arsenal might have to compete with. Uh, London James says, Jorginho should get a new contract, but it shouldn't be two plus one. It should be one plus one. If he continues to be amazing, then maybe look at it again at the end of next year. Uh, Brickhead says, Jorginho is well worth the extension. Great for what he brings and always available. Not an everyday player, but hugely valuable. And Richard uh, says, Jorginho is still 
far more sure thing than party will ever be going forward. Give Jorginho a two plus one and sleep easy and dump party for whatever cash you can get. Ah, interesting one at the end. Now, I'm not sure Arsenal will be able to dump, which isn't a very nice word, <laughs> on Thomas Party's uh, and get whatever money they can get. I'm not sure how much money they'll get for Thomas Party in the summer. I think that's going to be a very interesting one to look at if anyone does come in with a bid for Thomas. They didn't really in the summer last year. And I think it'll be even harder to sell this year, given he's barely played and he'll only have one year left in his contract. So we'll have to wait and see. But I, I, you know, I think Jorginho definitely deserves a new deal. I really do. I said it yesterday. I think he's proven his worth. I think he's got loads still to offer. And if that's what it takes to keep him and not have clubs slapping three-year deals on the table for him from elsewhere, you know, I wouldn't be against two plus one, especially if that plus one is on Arsenal's side, which means they're the ones who could trigger it because then they don't have to. So it could effectively just be a two-year contract. Um, so yeah, I'd be, uh, that's my thoughts on it. And now just before I go, here's one from AZ99682. It says, I miss the yellow thumbnails for Inside Arsenal Extra Time. It feels like it's definitely a show that should be differentiated as it's more of a long-form video compared to the usual episodes. Love all the videos regardless. Yeah, look, they are... They, the yellow th thumbnails will be back. The only reason the last two I've done have had red thumbnails is because they've gone out as a morning show because of timings haven't quite worked. I haven't been able to do it as a sort of extra evening show. Um, so I've had to do them as a regular morning show. So I've kept them as a red thumbnails. But next week, when it will be back in its usual evening slot, the yellow thumbnails will be back to differentiate it from the usual daily shows. All right, that's it from me, everyone. Thank you very much for watching or listening. Have a very good weekend wherever you are, and I'll be back tomorrow to do it all over again. Bye-bye.